This is a beautiful little object whose shape immediately draws your eye when you enter the gallery. It belongs to a style of Muslim grave marker that was fashionable in the 11th and 12th centuries in Egypt and Tunisia and North Africa generally. Now we call them prismatic tombstones after their shape and because of their elegance they become collector's items. This type of gravestone always has an inscription in the majestic Arabic script called Kufik. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Sallallahu ala nabiyyi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sallam tasliman kulliyan. God bless and keep the Prophet Muhammad and his family. Then we have a very short chapter from the Quran which declares the oneness and uniqueness of God. The other side of the stone tells us who is buried underneath. This is the grave of Ghariba, a girl's or woman's name, daughter of Makhluf. Then we have the date of death. She died on Tuesday the 4th of Shawwal in the year 431, which is equivalent to Tuesday, June the 17th, 1040. May God make her a benefit to her parents and may he grant them steadfast courage to bear her loss. There's no date of birth, which is usual, but we can guess that Ghariba was young. This is because of the prayer for her death to benefit her parents. The idea is that the innocence of children will plead for their parents and that parents will gain merit if they bear their loss with courage, like Jacob in chapter 12 of the Quran, who went blind with weeping for his lost son Joseph, but nevertheless showed steadfast courage. Does a tombstone belong in a museum, and should it be treated as a work of art? Medieval Muslim travel writers described notable tombstones, so we know that they were noticed and admired. Sometimes stonemasons added their signatures as a mark of pride, and there were distinct fashions in tombstones over time and in different places. So I think we can say that they were meant to be works of art. Their beauty was meant to soothe and console. What were people's feelings about death and the dead? This is what most interests me about the tombstone because I study the Arabic literature of the time when Khariba lived and death and mourning, love and loss are very important subjects. Ghariba's tombstone says it all, or nearly all, and it was a great thrill to me to find a tangible object that embodies so many things I'd read about. People loved and missed their dead and wanted to be able to visit them, maybe even talk to them. They wanted suffering to make sense and strengthen their faith, not undermine it and lead them to despair. People went and meditated in graveyards and there are stories of them being reminded by voices from the grave to think on death and decay. But there are also graveyard tales of lovers' quarrels being healed after death and husbands and wives reconciled. People wrote poems to mourn their dead, to describe the horror of their death throes and remember how much they loved them. Poetry was one of the most important ways of living out death. Because of this, poems are often found on tombstones. But it wasn't all gloom. People could see the funny side of death too and its creepy side. We have thrillers set in graveyards and satirical mock epitaphs. This is all part of the landscape of Ghariba's tombstone. And the tombstone is one of the ways that the Ashmolean makes it possible for teachers to show their students what ideas and feelings meant a thousand years ago.